Hey guys, Crave the Lazy Geek here and today I'm gonna tell you to not buy that expensive telescope or that expensive mount or that expensive autofocuser or electronic focuser because you can fix all of your issues in post. It's not quite true, but it is true to some extent. Uh, so um, th there is a new tool that's not available yet, but it's kind of like in a beta testing, alpha testing kind of phase that's called Star Fixer. And before I go more into the details, I'll just show you exactly how it works. So I am on my computer right now and I just went to a website called starfixer.org. I'll put the link down in the description and you can see that uh, we have Starfixer 0.1 Alpha um, that basically you can drag and drop an astro picture and get it fixed. So if I start with a very standard kind of astrophoto which I processed in a previous video, um, we can see that we have some stars that are kind of bloated and uh, the tracking wasn't perfect. So I don't get perfect star shapes here. So we could try that. And to do so, I'll just drag and drop the image. I'll uh, say that I am not a robot. It trusted me there and I can click on submit and what this will do it will actually take a small piece of your of your image randomly and show you the before and after the star fixing algorithm has run. The reason for that is that starfixer.org uses artificial intelligence slash machine learning and so it's very expensive for the servers on the other end of the website and their GPUs, the graphical processing units, our graphics card to basically do that computation. So it's not doing the whole image, just a sample so that you know we can test it, we can provide feedback about issues, uh, that kind of stuff. So if I click on submit now, what happens? We'll get, as I was saying, a random sample of the image and we can see that this, this star was kind of blocky here and the stars are smaller, tighter, more beautiful. So here I am submitting it again to try to get a different uh, part of the image and we can see it is indeed trying to fix stars. It's not perfect. I see some stars that might have disappeared in the process. Noise might have been a bit like um, sharpened. Even the galaxy looks like it has been sharpened. So it's very interesting to see what it's doing. Uh, if we go to a sample that's much more aggressive, like this sample. So this is a sample from uh, one of my camera lenses where I had a lot of til tilt, especially in the corners there, um, where really the star shapes are completely terrible. We can try that. Um, I need to forget not to I click on submit and we can see all of those star shapes that are absolutely terrible in the original image. They suddenly are much better, more star-like in the final image. If I uh, try this image again, see if we get a different area. Uh, we get the center, we get those stars here that are completely out of focus, that are definitely much better here. So we get a good idea of how well this uh, tool will be working. I have a third type of image here that uh, we can try. Again, this is through a camera lens. And the stars are a bit bloated in the original picture, they're much less bloated and of a better shape in the end picture, which, you know, it's quite impressive. And I am very impressed by what this preview of Star Fixer gives me. Um, and so that's why I'm saying you should not buy an expensive telescope because, you know, go for that acromat thingy <laughs> because you're just going to get bad star shapes that can fix it in, in, in post and go for the mount that doesn't track properly because, you know, star trails, you can fix them in post. If I go to the, um, to the FAQs, I think, or hard to, you can see an image uh, with star trails here that is uh, shown to be like, completely fixed by this. Uh, your out of focus images, don't worry about them. You can fix them in post. And obviously that's not quite the case because there's, there's two very big problems with that. The first problem is very uh, clearly about the image quality itself because poor star shapes, as you know, if you have a, f a frequent viewer of this channel, I don't really care that much about, sh about star shapes. I will say something about star shapes. They're typically a symptom of something else. If you have like chromatic aberration around your stars, it typically means like the nebulosity in your image is probably not that much affected by that. So I don't really care too much about that. But if your stars are out of focus uh, or they're completely tilted, 
it means that the rest of the image is also out of focus or tilted, at least in some areas of the uh, image, which means that uh, the nebulosity that you are trying to capture in addition to the stars is also affected. You'll get a less good signal to noise ratio, you let, you, you'll get less resolution in your image, you'll be able to sharpen it less, you'll have fewer details, it's gonna be more difficult to process. So really stars as a symptom of a capture problem that you have in the, in the image. And no amount of machine learning, uh, well, uh, maybe I should not say that, but let's say star fixer will not uh, fix that. It will only fix the stars, which it will fix the symptom of something bigger. Your images might have been better. So it's not like the, uh, the one tool to rule them all that will fix everything magically. Still, you know, I love technology. I'm a geek, as my uh, name would imply. And, you know, I love seeing uh, how technology is being used. But we go into the second point, which is about technology. Should this be used for your images? And if I have an image where I run Star Fixer on it, is it still my image? Is it still an accurate representation of what, what I was trying to capture? And, you know, there's a big camp of where I could just say, yes, it is. Um, we're, we're using machine learning to reconstruct stars. But anyway, your stars in the first place were not an accurate re representation of what you were trying to capture uh, because you had tons of stuff. The optics didn't uh, do the stars justice. The sensor itself did not do the star, the star justice. There was blooming the stars over multiple pixels instead of being on a single point. The atmosphere uh, blurred that star away. So by fixing that via AI, well, we are really trying to get closer to what the original image was supposed to be. So we are going for authenticity here. But of course, you could go for the opposite side of the argument. The machine learning really doesn't know what it's doing. It's just tries to achieve better star shapes. So it's completely guessing and what you're getting is a guesstimate. It's almost art, it's not science. You're just getting a better looking image. Is that still astrophotography? And I'm getting the feeling we're gonna, we're gonna get two sides on that. Just like when we saw, when Starnet++, the, the first, as far as I'm aware, machine learning kind of experiments that, that ha was very wide scale uh, in terms of removing the stars from, from your images. And people, many people did not like images without stars, like being like, what's the point of taking pictures of stars if you remove the stars afterwards? And I personally kind of like, I enjoyed those starless pictures, especially of nebulae, because it looks like like almost like a painting. And I kind of like it for the art kind of aspect of it. I, I find it really cool in some instances. So I, can, I kind of see uh, how it's working both ways. But star fixers really alters the image. And you know, you could run your image through star fixer, get better looking stars, and post that online and you know, uh, have that as an A-pod, astrophoto, pic astrophoto picture of the day, or even in like a, a general kind of uh, competition, and not mention that you use Star Fixer, and people will find the image pleasing to the eye because the stars are so small and tight and well controlled, and, but it does not reflect how accurate your capture was. And, that's where I see that the lines get a bit blurred and it might be a big kind of debate. So I'd really be interested in what you think about that. If you can leave me your opinion down in the comments while you're at it, by the way, if you're a new viewer to this channel, welcome to the channel. Feel free to also consider subscribing or is it this direction, subscribing there uh, with that subscribe button and that little notification bell I have tons of videos about astrophotography. You can look at my back history of stuff as well to see if you'd be interested. But anyway, this, I'm getting the feeling there's gonna be a big debate. I really love when new technology is available to kind of like make our images better. But in this case, will it be worth it? Does it make sense? Does it invalidate the whole capture process? What is the point? Like, it, I really want to hear what you think about that. I'm excited and at the same time, I'm a bit fearful of what's happening there. Um, uh, is the image still my image? Was it even worth it? My time spent like capturing that in image, I could have just taken images from remote telescopes and processed them for the same effect. Um, does it basically discourage me from trying to fix my setup? Or on the other hand, does it encourage or does it help beginners not worry too much about the setup so they can get started in the hobby cheaply. It's all like I'm, I'm a bit, mm, I'm not sure exactly there. Still, 
It's a very neat tool. I really wanted to uh, introduce it to you guys. I learned uh, about it on Facebook uh, astrophotography groups. And you know, I think it's really cool. And I'm, I can't wait to see what your opinion will be uh, about, uh, will be on this, uh, on this particular tool. So thank you so much uh, for watching this. I hope this has been useful in you know, helping you learn about a new tool. So if you think this tool is awesome, then by all means, you know, uh, buy a cheap a chromatic uh, refractor that's you know, terrible for astrophotography in theory. Uh, take some images, run them through this tool and tell me if the, uh, if the tool actually fixed your chromatic aberration. If it didn't, we should contact the author to ask him to train the model for chromatic aberration as well. I'd be super interested uh, with that. And you know, if you have such images, try it out. It's going to be super cool. And uh, really, I want to see what your feedback is. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, whenever you can, remember, don't forget to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.